uh, Benoit for giving me the floor and uh, it was very good indeed to see uh, this morning the queues at the, the entrance uh, to the building. Uh, I think when we started uh, more than, what is it, one and a half year ago with the, uh, with the working group at that time, uh, I think we were a bit concerned whether this problem, which is a, a big problem that relates to benchmarks and benchmark transition, uh, whether it was getting the, trend, the attention that it should uh, receive. And I think having all of you here uh, around this morning is a reflection uh, of the interest in the topic and the importance of working uh, on benchmark transition. In February 2018, I gave the concluding remarks uh, at the first meeting of the working group on the Euro risk-free rates here also in Frankfurt. And since then, important milestones have been achieved by this working group in the form of recommendations to the public. While the Alternative Reference Rates Committee was first convened by the Fed in 2014 and the Working Group on Sterling Risk-Free Reference Rates was established by the Bank of England in 2015, the Working Group on the Euro Risk-Free Rates first met in early 2018, as just mentioned. I can recall that at the time there was a common feeling among the Working Group members and observers of lagging behind the other jurisdictions. Thanks to the joint effort by the private and the public sectors, that feeling is now in the past. In the last 18 months, the working group has put in motion a process of reform of interest rates in the Eurozone that has gained momentum and has produced recommendation after recommendation and has attracted the attentions of market participants both here in the EU and abroad. In my subsequent remarks, as you will understand from a regulatory authority, I would focus more on the regulatory and supervisory issues related to uh, benchmarks. Uh, as you are aware, we have given technical advice to the European Commission on the benchmark regulation. We have issued technical standards uh, on the benchmark regulation, and we're also participating uh, in the colleges uh, of Euribor, Ionia, and LIBOR. Therefore, it's only natural that with ESMA's regulatory perspective, our main aim is now the adoption of EU supervised entities or fallbacks in new and existing contracts. This is necessary to ensure that the relevant provisions of the benchmark regulation are complied with by benchmark users. The goal of these provisions is to increase contractual robustness and enhance the financial stability in the EU financial system. We know that benchmarks play a central role in financial markets and that they are also an important building block of contracts, including retail contracts like mortgages. Fostering a wide adoption of reliable and effective fallbacks across different asset classes would surely promote stable and orderly financial markets and can deal with worst case scenarios in relation to benchmarks. This in turn would enhance both the protection of investors in benchmarks and their clients, making sure that their interests are safeguarded in all scenarios. However, we also know that the implementation of those uh, fallbacks have been slow to date. The working group has already started work on what is arguably the most important fallback rate in the EU, the one for Euribor. The successful development of functional fallbacks for Euribor is crucial for the working group in order to consider its mission fulfilled. As mentioned already by Benoit, the work on fallbacks for Euribor should be the core topic for the working group in the months ahead. The authorization of Euribor in July 2019 by the FMSA is certainly a key step forward, confirming that the new hybrid methodology is robust, resilient and transparent. And I believe that the new hybrid methodology measures the same underlying interest of the previous methodology of Euribor, just in a better BMR, benchmark regulation, compliant way. Indeed, the authorization of Euribor allows EU supervised entities to continue using Euribor for the foreseeable future. The public sector is aware that of identifying effective fallbacks for Euribor and including them in contracts is a challenging task, also because of the extensive economic, legal and operational implications. However, we also believe that the working group has proven itself to be ready for this challenge, considering the track record of its key achievements. First steps on the path to a sound Euribor fallbacks have already been taken, notably the working group recommendation on a specific forward-looking term structure methodology based on ESTR. Later this morning, members of the working group will discuss in detail all the main issues surrounding the identification and 
adoption of ESDR-based term structures that could serve Euribor fallbacks, and I'm sure you will find the debate very useful. And this brings me also to the second challenge where ESMA considers the rule of the working group to be decisive. Thanks to the excellent work done by the ECB, as of next week, and it was already, of course, mentioned by uh, Benoit, as of next week, the Eurozone will have a new and reliable interest rate that is based exclusively on trans transactions, ESTR. While the ECB will provide market participants with a new rate that meets the highest standards in terms of transparency and governance, it will then, up, then, then be up to market forces to translate ESTR into a success story. I believe that the working group can play a key role in the broad adoption of ESTR. The role of ESTR goes clearly beyond being the base rate for fallbacks to Euribor and Aeonia. In a few days, the transition from Aeonia to ESTR will start on the basis of the recommendations by the working group. Derivatives markets will play a very relevant role in upgrading the role of ESTR, and in this context, the involvement of infrastructures like CCPs is a high priority. The liquidity of ESTR markets is a crucial factor for the calculation of forward-looking term structures, together with sufficient sources of relevant data allowing the actual computation of term structures. Trading venues such as multilateral trading facilities must also be part of this exceptional transition to ESTR. The issue of establishing a liquid ESTR market and the transition of Aeonia to ESTR will be covered in detail today by the working experts by the working group experts, and they will help you in understanding all the pieces of this puzzle. Let me then, uh, before uh, I leave the floor and hand over to the other Stephen, make a few uh, final remarks on two uh, remarks on the regulatory environment. Uh, these regulatory changes will change the uh, benchmark regulation uh, and will have an impact on uh, benchmarks in the EU. First, uh, there is the regulatory change relating to uh, climate benchmarks, which will uh, allow having um, uh, reliable climate uh, uh, benchmarks. The key element for us here, I think, is the extension of the transition period with two years, which will allow that both for third country benchmarks and for critical benchmarks, the transition period will be extended to the end of December 2021. And I think that will be very much welcomed here by the participants in the audience. The second one that I would like to mention is the ESA's review package, which includes an enhanced role for ESMA on benchmark. Indeed, by the end of 2021, the supervision of third country administrators recognized in the EU and the supervision of critical benchmarks will be ESMA's responsibility. And so public authorities themselves will also be subject to a transition as, a supervisor, as the supervision of Euribor will pass on from the FSMA to ESMA. At ESMA, we're looking forward to building on the FSMA's pioneering work, uh, excellent work done by the FS FSMA in this area, uh, and we're working internally to make sure that this transition is a smooth, timely, and effective, effective one. So to conclude, uh, many thanks again to all the panelists, uh, members of the working group, um, and the public authorities involved both in the work leading up to this event um, and the, the event here today. And also, finally, the thanks to uh, ING and especially uh, Steven for the leadership and direction provided to the work in this area. Thank you very much for your attention.